Birds and scatter the good seed on the land. But it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. He sends the snow in winter, the warmth to swell the grain, the breezes and the sunshine and soft refreshing rain. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord for all His love. Welcome to our online service of worship, prayer and reflection. My name is Anne and I am one of the ministers to the churches in and around Kirby Lonsdale. But this week I am not anywhere near Kirby Lonsdale. I am currently on a pilgrimage visit to the beautiful Italian town of Assisi, learning lots about the life and legacy of St Francis. His care and concern for the poor and for the environment for the natural world all around us, make him a very fitting saint to remember at this harvest season. And his feast day is appropriately at the harvest season too, on the 4th of October, and I'm sure the celebrations here will be a sight to behold. The very stones of the buildings, set against the stunning countryside around here, speak of the legacy left by St Francis, of how we can find God in all the different aspects of creation. Sometimes, in the midst of the busyness and built-up nature of the town, it seemed hard to connect with that creation. But the same brother-son that Francis wrote about in his famous hymn of praise, the Canticle of the Sun, reminds us that the creation is all around us. That same sun beats down on us all. Me, here in Assisi, you wherever you are, even if it may be hiding behind clouds where you are, or shining on the other side of the world for you. It is still there, and that same sun beat down on St Francis too. And for me at this moment, sitting in this peaceful courtyard garden of the convent that is my home for this week, the verse of the canticle that I am most reminded of is Laudato si mi signore, pesora nostra matre terra. Praised be you, my Lord, through sister Mother Earth, who sustains us and governs us, and who produces varied fruits with coloured flowers and herbs. And so now let's hear our Bible reading today from the prophet Joel. Joel, chapter 2, verses 21 to 27. Do not fear, O soil, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit, the fig tree and vine give their full yield. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain the early and the later rain as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer and the cutter, my great army which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other, and my people shall never again be put to shame. I've mentioned a few times in these reflections that there's a, a theologian who suggests that there are certain passages in the Bible that are there to fund our imagination. 
That's the phrase he uses, fund our imagination. Help us see things differently. Help us imagine things that are difficult to imagine. You know, God's kingdom, which Jesus spoke of as you know, being where the first are last and the last are first, where the king of kings washes his subjects' feet, calls them friends, prepares a great banquet for them. So different from the way of the world uh, that we see all around us. So we need help. We need things to fund our imagination or to point to signs of it, glimpses of it in the world around. And one of those pictures that we have is that reading that we've just heard where it's pictured as a bumper harvest. Um, there's more than enough. It's overflowing, vibrant with colour, fruitfulness. More than enough for all life to flourish. Um, and that means we don't need to worry about tomorrow, where our next meal is going to come from. We can flourish not just physically, but emotionally, mentally, spiritually. The picture of a bumper harvest I think, speaks of harmony as well. There's, there's just the right amount of rain at the right time and, and the right amount of sun at the right time. So that everything flourishes. Um, not like this year where you know, June was wonderful, but then it did seem to go downhill from then on. Although it's always a good year for something. In the original context, that bumper harvest, that description of a bumper harvest, spoke of a future to people who thought they didn't have a future. And with the environmental crisis that we face and the climate crisis, I think that picture of a bumper harvest is one to hold on to, you know, to inspire our praying and our work uh, for that sort of world. And so this picture of a bumper harvest, a picture of God's kingdom, of God's promises, of life flourishing. Uh, this time of year, in fact, the 4th of October every year, is the day on which uh, we remember and give thanks for the life of St. Francis of Assisi. And, and if you know anything about St. Francis, it will probably be because of that you know, sense of wonder uh, and beauty of creation that he had. Um, as a young man, he served as a soldier, but he had a, a conversion experience and it led him to renounce his family's wealth, devote his life to God. And he did seem to have this, this sense of connection with the natural world. You know, he called all creatures his brothers and his sisters. Um, it may seem you know, very odd to our ears. But I wonder if we had been a bit more like St. Francis, would we have ended up exploiting things in the way that we have? A few weeks ago in our reflection, uh, we had the hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King. And that's a translation into English of Francis's uh, Canticle of the Sun, or uh, Canticle of the Creatures, as it's also known. But the original is much more intimate than, than the hymn translation. So I thought today it might be nice to see another translation um, that's a more accurate translation of the original and just have a few moments to read it and have that sense of, of how Francis saw the world around.
St. Francis, Canticle of the Sun, or Canticle of the Creatures. And I love the way that you know, the radiance of the sun spoke to Francis of God's radiance, and the way that the wind and the clouds and the weather spoke to him of, of God as the life giver, you know, the way that he praised God through the earth, because through the earth, God gave us fruits and flowers and herbs, and it's so full of thankfulness and praise. You know, seeing God at work, glimpsing God's character in creation, and being filled with thankfulness and praise. So our reading from Joel, that has that picture of a bumper harvest speaking to us of God's kingdom. And of course, Jesus also told a story about a bumper harvest. But the response there wasn't one of thankfulness and praise. The person thought only of themselves and, and how clever they'd been um, and decided they would tear down the barns that they had and build bigger ones to store everything so that they could then relax and eat and drink and be merry. But of course, it didn't turn out like that for them. And yes, we have our part to play in the harvest. Of course we do. Uh, but we can't claim all the credit. Um, the world does matter, but not because it's the only thing there is, the only reality. You know, there is this eternal dimension, divine dimension. And the world does speak to us if we look for it, of God's character, of God's nature, of God's promises. And it invites a life, a response of thankfulness and praise. We plough the fields and scatter the good seed on the land, but it is fed and watered by God's Almighty hand. He sends the snow in winter, the warmth to swirl the grain, the breezes and the sunshine and soft refreshing rain. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. More to us, his children, he gives our daily bread. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh, thank the Lord for all his love. We thank thee then, oh Father. time and the harvest, our life, our health, our food. Accept the gifts we offer for all I love in parts. And what thou most desirest, our humble, thankful hearts. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord for all his love. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord for all his love.
Loving God, we thank you for the beauty of our earth, the warm rain as we wander through our streets, the bright sunlight on the trees, and the howling wind that ensures we are grateful for shelter. We are mindful of places in the world where our actions mean they have an increase in flooding, wildfires, and the experience of glaciers melting. Help us place the care of our world as a high priority in all our decision making. We pray for this awareness to also be reached by companies, leaders, and those who hold powerful positions of authority when it comes to tackling the climate emergency. Grant us hope and a determination to care for our world even when others don't. Give us an ability to continue to enjoy our world every day, seeing your beauty wherever we go. Amen. All knowing God, we take a moment to hold up to you those we love who are sick, worried or feeling lost. Surround them with your love this day and always. Amen. Understanding God. Life can often feel like a juggling act. We can get caught up in the busyness and doing elements of life. This week, help us all find space to encounter you, whether that be through praying, walking, being surrounded by those we love, or some other way. We know God recognised the importance of Sabbath. Help us remember its importance too, and diminish any feelings of guilt that can appear when we choose to simply be with you. Let guilt be replaced with feelings of being known and loved. Amen. Please join me in saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As we come to the end of our time together, we must give a big thank you to all who made this service possible. Those who've shared thoughts, readings and prayers, and those who put the service together. But particularly to you for being there online and sharing with us. My first memories of harvesting were over 50 years ago, before I became a Christian. I was doing a requisite one-year work experience on a farm before studying agriculture. I remember the harvest period of long sunny days, starting at 7am milking the cows. A relief milker attended to them in the evenings. After morning milking, The rest of the day was spent throwing with a pitchfork bales of straw or hay onto a flatbed trailer. Of course, as the stack got taller, the more strenuous it became to throw the bales onto the trailer. Despite the warm sun, I soon learned to wear some protection on my arms to avoid the sharp pieces of straw or hay which would otherwise penetrate my skin and need to be pulled out of my forearms. We used to work until 9pm, go to bed, get up the following morning and do it all again. You will not be surprised that I did not finish my year, but took up a more gentle career in food science instead. I used to marvel at the skill and strength of the farmers who delivered such good harvests. These days, as a Christian, 
although harvesting is much more mechanised, I still congratulate and admire the farmers for all they do. But I praise God for providing the fertile soil and the sun and the rain at the right times to provide a bumper crop. And so, as we go our separate ways, a final blessing. May the blessing of God, who cycles the season, seasons and swells the grain, go with us. May the blessing of the sun, who harvests, kneads and breaks the bread, go with us. May the blessing of the Spirit, who challenges us to a just sharing of the earth's harvest, go with us, now and into the week ahead. Amen. Hope you can join us again next week. Good gifts are